Wetsuit has arrived from Australia. Wetsuit has finally arrived from Australia. It's just about summer. Haven't been diving in about five or six months. Pretty keen, cold water's not gonna stop me. Finally going diving today at Brighton. <laughs> but uh, it's supposed to be 13 degree water. Not really that great. And uh, this is what it looks like outside. Not the greatest day. Definitely the first time I've got on a train to go diving before, but this wasn't my train. I got on the right train and then headed to Brighton. It's a long walk. After about a 2K walk, we ended up at the Brighton Pier, which is a giant carnival roller coaster thing. Here's the big pier I'm gonna dive. Water looks pretty filthy. Typical English day, but we'll give it a go. Idiot me forgot to bring conditioner to get into his wetsuit, so the only way to get it on was to jump in the freezing cold water. The rocks don't even hurt because I can't feel my feet. <laughs> That's really cold. <laughs> Time to go. The water looked really dirty, but I was being optimistic and I went anyway, but it was absolute crap. I thought maybe it was just the top layer of water that was crap, so I dived the massive three meters to the bottom and found more crap. I'd come this far, so I was just going to keep heading out further in hopes that the biz would improve, and it actually did. The pier is actually quite an impressive structure, so I was just taking it all in for a moment and then it was time for a serious dive. Through the gloom, there it is. That's the first fish I saw. It was a mullet. I just had my first confirmed sighting of a fish. I saw a cracking mullet of about 800 grams. I'm gonna go see if I can find him again and take some dinner. As it turns out, Brighton has crabs above the water and below the water. These little spiders were walking around basically everywhere. I also had the first confirmed sighting of a European bass right here. Unfortunately, it was still closed season. Continuing on to the bottom, I still don't know how I actually saw this fish right here. You, you can't see it in the footage at all. Not exactly a monster halibut that I was hoping for in Norway, but it's the next best thing. Oh yeah. I was fast working out that this place actually had a fair bit of marine life. Check out this silver eel, it runs into a bass. And on the way up, I had a pot shot at this mullet. Which you get excited about, but uh, saw this fella in the dark and then just had a pot shot and look at this thing! <laughs> so after two hours I shot three fish, apart from being really cold, it was really good fun. Fat mullet. 
first place. <laughs> get it first place. Made it. <laughs> I did it. Went to England, shot fish. Yeah. So as it turns out, just because you live in central London doesn't mean you can't go spearfishing. The next time I went diving was in a place called Portland Bill. It was for a pairs competition for the London International Club. I teamed up with fellow Australian Andrew Gom for our pairs comp. He dived the area a fair bit, so he was my local guide. The tides run so hard here, there's actually like a sub-tide between the high and the low from the eddy of the current, so we had to time it really well to make sure we didn't get swept out to France. One thing I quickly noticed about this place is there was tons and tons of kelp. And in that kelp, there was tons and tons of mullet. At least now we had some points on the board for the competition. Through the shoals of mullet, I kept seeing the odd small sea bass, but I just couldn't get a shot on them. They moved really quickly. After seeing nothing much but mullet for a long time, I had to do something. Took another one for the dinner table. This is something I really didn't expect, to shoot a place from underneath. It's unheard of. Here I'm about to tick off another species for our score sheet. There were these small fish called black brim that were coming in and out of the mullet shoals. One came a bit too close. Despite being small, these things are actually really, really good to eat. The tide had started to turn, so I had one last dive and found this brown crab. I was all pumped up for a big fight and it was pretty anticlimactic really. The tide really started to run now, so we had to head in quick so we didn't get swept out to sea. Not the most graceful exit, but I got out of the water unscathed. We had three hours left of the competition, so we headed around the corner to Chesil Beach. Unfortunately, my GoPro ran out of battery, as they do, but I did manage to find a small lobster. I let him go as soon as I saw this sea bass though. Not a monster, but my first Euro bass and the fifth weighing fish for the competition. There were some exceptional catches that came into the competition. Big bass and cod. Everyone was really friendly, it was a great time. As the sun was setting at nine o'clock, it was time to say goodbye to the bill. Until next time, that is. One of the things that I really love about spearfishing is the places it takes you. I probably never would have gone to this area if it wasn't for the competition. My sister-in-law from Brisbane was visiting and she had never been to Brighton. I took the opportunity to go for a quick afternoon dive. There was bait everywhere as well as big shoals of mullet. Here I was seeing a few bass out in the open as well as the black brim. I probably should have taken a black brim but I was just really hoping that a big bass would come in. They just never did. I ended up getting one bass, but not on video. So I decided to give the local mullet population a touch up. I also scored a nice little place. The place was really starting to fire, but I agreed to meet the girls at 6.30, so I had to swim in. Great success, Brighton Pier. And look at that. 
This was my last dive for the year. It was mid-November and I took the day off work. The weather was just beautiful for the week leading up to it. Here I can see the rocks as they hit the sand. The water was just super clear. I was pretty pumped at what I was gonna find. What I did find was bloody cold water. The coldest I've ever dived, 12.6 degrees. I saw some bait on the surface and I thought there's gotta be something eating those underneath. And I was right, a dirty fat place sitting right on the edge of the rock in the sand. A nice way to start the day. Just have a look at the conditions. So flat, so clean. As I was getting closer to the pier, I spotted a place sitting on a piece of steel. I knew if I shot down on it, I would absolutely destroy my spear. So I had to look around to see if there was anything easy to shoot. But then I got behind this thing and shot it on a really low angle. My spear was fine. Another one on the stringer and the bait just kept getting thicker. There was even a little free swimming bass on the bottom. I held off shooting this one in hopes of something a bit bigger. So much bait. I was testing out my new torch. These things didn't seem phased by it at all. I got down inside the pier a bit more and there was just masses of bait. It was unbelievable. There were lots of little pouting hiding away in the holes, but I was hoping for a lobster, but I just never found any. I'd seen eels here before, so it wasn't a surprise, but this one was really having a go at the mussels. It just seemed to be pecking at them and then shaking them apart. It was pretty cool to see. And then it was just bulk eels. There must have been some sort of breeding congregation. They were pretty friendly little fellas. I was having a blast with the torch. I didn't see any mullet though, so I was checking deeper into the holes, and then I caught a glimpse of silver. I knew this was the biggest bass I'd ever seen, and I was getting a little bit of buck fever, but I managed to put in a pretty good shot. It's probably right about now as it comes over and under a piece of steel that I realize, I don't have a knife, this fish is really tangled, I'm freezing. Am I going to be able to dive this thing out? I saw the shot was pretty good, so I left it on the bottom. I thought I'd breathe up and have another go at it. Upon returning, I realized this fish is stuck pretty bad. My shot's all right and the fish is pretty well done. So once again, I have to leave it down there and try again. So my plan at this stage was to take the fish stringer off my float. I had to take the place off the float so I could use the fish stringer as a kill spike. So I brained the bass and then took it off the spear, recovered it to the surface, and then the following dives, I would have to get my spear back. I did end up getting my spear back, which was nice, but this bass was something else. I was really stoked on this. With the bag limit being one bass per day in the UK at the moment, I thought I'd go down with the camera and see what else I could film. And lo and behold, there's a bass about five inches longer than the one I've just shot. Sitting there in a cave, doing nothing. I guess she'll be there for next season. The smaller bass on the right was still probably around two kilos. After looking at them all day, I finally decided that one of these pouting were big enough for the dinner table. And it was actually really good to eat. I would pick this over mullet any day of the week. By this stage, I was absolutely freezing in my five mil suit. But I had a pretty nice catch to show for it. And that's how I ended my first year of spearfishing in the UK with a 4.85 kilo bass. I've got to say a big thank you to Kevin Daly, James Thoburn and Andrew Gom for answering my million and one questions about diving in the UK.